interview, Governor Yahaya Bello speaks about the agricultural revolution in Kogi State. Governor Yahaya Bello, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Let's begin this conversation with the biofuel deal you have with the Nigerian uh, National Petroleum Corporation and NPC. What is it all about? Yeah, it's uh, a kind of a cooperation uh, and understanding or agreement between NNPC and Kogi State government in the area of uh, establishment of uh, biofuel refinery in Kogi State, where uh, cassava, sugarcane, and products of those nature will be used to convert or be converted to biofuel. And uh, the implication is that our farmers and other major players will establish <coughs> a lot of farm where the products will be used, more or less like an optica. So our farmers, whether comfortable farmers, um, big time investors will come in, invest in the country, I mean in the states, and uh, a lot of our youths will be employed and the value chain, you know, will be established along the line. After establishing the biofuel uh, refinery in the States, I think in the first year we are thinking of about 1 million youths to be taken off the uh, uh, labor market. How much of cassava goes into exports right now? I don't have the figure of it, but surely we are the largest producer of cassava in the country right now. And um, instead of taking it to outside the country or to other states, once we have the biofuel refinery in the states, we would rather be taking more from outside. Let's talk about rice production right now. Of course, there's a lot of talk about um, agriculture being a major hub yeah. uh, in Kogi State. But this rice seems not to be exactly popular outside Kogi, just like we hear about lake rice. You hear about um, the ones... Um, Kebi Nasarawa and the rest of it. So we're wondering with this much production, you know, why is it just within the state? We want our own market to be saturated with this product first before we go outside the state. We can produce, our people will still be buying at exorbitant price and we have not been able to regulate it properly and then we'll be taking them outside the state. We produce for the state, then the excess we shall take outside the So country. what is the target right now for rice production? We are targeting uh, not less than 250,000 metric tons of rice production meal uh, per day. And the IGR, what, what's the timeline for the sort of IGR you're expecting from? As we speak now, we are having, we're averaging 1 billion, 1.1 billion. By the time we finished establishing all this, we, should be, we shouldn't be targeting less than three billion per month. Now, Kogi State is usually referred to as civil service states. And I said, no, it's not possible. Not a state where we have all these potentials. All it requires is just political will to convert them to tangibles. And today, we are going agrarian. We are going commercial. We are going industrial. And the narratives are changing from civil service state or civil servant state to a commercial nerve center of the North Central. You're one of those championing the cause for cattle colony. What informed your decision? A lot of factors. But let me mention a few. Um, I am that kind of a person that don't look at challenge as a bad thing. I look at opportunities in every challenge that presents itself. Starting from the recent happenings of um, pastoralists, otherwise known as headsmen, and crop farmers. 
the challenges that arise where there are clashes in other states, even though not very pronounced in my state, but I need to be proactive so that the little ones that are happening, I quickly forestall it. Aside the security aspect of it, I looked at it as a, an, a, an opportunity where we can further engage our youths. That is one. Where we can equally educate the headsmen. Well, when you say further engage the youths, yeah. what are you talking about? Further engage the youths because youths have been engaged in various farm, farming uh, activities. To, for, to further engage them, meaning there are still more that we need to further engage in other aspects of agriculture. Aside crop, cropping, we are talking of animal husbandry, livestock, and the rest. So we need to further engage them in this area as in order to create more jobs for them. You know. Now, also, we need to educate these headsmen the best way of keeping their livestock and getting maximum output out of it. So now when the issue of cattle, you know, so-called cattle colony, you know, you know, even though politically uh, misused the word colony most of the time, but to call it cattle ranching, is an opportunity that presents itself. Just like when the opportunity of issue of commercial agri loans came up from CBN, this is another opportunity where federal government is going to invest heavily or assist uh, those who will be interested in cattle ranching, you know, to assist in, you know, producing enough livestock. And I look at that as not just a business for the headsmen alone. We should be able to engage our youths in this area and make the best out of it. How? we should be able to make Nigeria, I mean, uh, Kogi State, the whole land of Nigeria. Are people in your state buying into this idea? My people are such a person that appreciate good things. And they look at um, the issue of cattle ranching as a very good opportunity for them to tap into. And that is why, um, upon sensitizing them, what it means, to have a cattle ranch in an area, a cluster of cattle ranch in an area. They quickly bought into it and provided 15,000 hectares. When you hear of a lot of people who, according to uh, people like you who support this, mi misconstrue the, the term colony, do you regret this? I, I think I would rather admonish and advise um, those who use the word colony um, in a very negative way. You see, in biology, we have bee colony. We have colony of crocodile. We have colony of cattle. It doesn't mean that the headsman or the, uh, the, the farmer is coming to colonize your land. Let me give you an instance. We have a situation where an investor is coming to ask for 100,000 hectares of land to, 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 to produce rice, for instance. Does that mean that that particular investor has come to colonize your land? No. If we have uh, a, a cluster of ranches in an area, it's a commercial venture for either the headsmen, or as we are moving now, for our youths that we shall engage in uh, livestock. So in this modern age, with all the laws and legislations, no any single individual can colonize anybody's land any longer. Well, that's easier so, said than done. No, 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 no. It is um, it's not possible any longer. We have our laws and rules and regulations guiding every inch of this country. So it is not possible again. I think it is just over-politicization of that word that is making people to be scared. 
So that's why we, uh, we in, you know, in Kogiste, we call it cluster of ranches. Beneficial to the headsmen, to our youths, for our economy, and for production of a lot of things. Milk, meat, an organic manure, and several other value chain that we can derive from it. Well, that's as much as we can take right now. Thank you very much, Governor Yahaya Bello, for your time on Dateline Abuja. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm glad. Well, thank you very much for your mails and comments. Always keep sending your views and comments using the email address and Twitter handle on your screen. Also, be sure to share anything happening within your locality. And don't you forget, you can view the program on youtube.com forward slash channels web forward slash videos. Thank you so much for watching this week. I'm Gloria Umezuke. See you again.